Okay, thank you, Sajal. Uh, my name is Pradeep Madhura, and I work at Kashmir Living Labs. Uh, what do you understand by Maptivism? I think with the definition I will be able to guess. But uh, Maptivism, before starting with the presentation, I would like to give you some background, like what I used to do and uh, where I'm jumping into. So for four years, I worked in various platforms advocating for the right of youth and some of the environmental agendas. For example, you might have heard, or if not, Nepal is declared as plastic bag free zone. So I worked and also led that movement with the help of thousands of young people in Kathmandu starting in 2011 and we succeeded in 2015 getting legislation on plastic bag bans. So with that experience, I joined Kathmandu Living Labs with the hope that I'll be able to bring some of the changes in the map and especially in the open mapping community. So with this interest, I would like to begin with this term. So this is not my uh, coin term, but also I would like to begin with this thing. It looks very fancy, the mapivism, right? So it's called mapping as activism. And some of the people I met uh, so far, uh, they were asking me questions like, how, you, how are you guys uh, are coordinating with these high level government people and also the um, political uh, people, you know? So it's very difficult in our country to coordinate with all these people. So I'll show you and I'll show you some of the tricks that you can use this framework for the perfect example of activism. I'm sure it's not a perfect, but also. So they say map is the mirror of society, but how? Like we imagine or we see our face every day in map mirror and we reflect, okay, we look good, everybody thinks the same way. And also, looking at the map, we can see how good is our community is, or how good is our society can be. So, the map, and also the link with government, you can see, and also the civil society. These are the three pillars, I think, sitting in this room as well. So, we can see the intersection of all these components, and I think you guys are, you know, like already into that thing. So, I would like to go through some of the uh, aspiring uh, advocate group in the world. For example, Am Amnesty International, Oxfam, Greenpeace, and Doctor Without Borders. So these are the lesson activists or activism organization in the world. So they are not just into the activism, they don't shout, they also do action. So that is what I'm bringing in my presentation. So they do things in real and also at the same time they shout loudly. And it, is, it shows that 80, more than 80% uh, data contains geo-reference information. So it shows that information can be displayed, displayed through maps. And also, let me show you some of the pictures. I think you might have uh, already familiar with these kind of roads in Kathmandu. So, unfortunately, we don't have information about all these things in maps, and also these kind of informations. So the government has declared these places are the on settlement zones, but the people, they do not know all this information, and they are forced to live in that hell. And also, look at the disparity between two districts. So, this is what we have done with NPC National Planning Commission, Dr. Sodi Mwabe was mentioning about. And you can see the disparity between these two uh, um, uh, districts. And also the air condition of Kathmandu Valley. So, already in your country presentation, we heard about uh, if there is a cause, the contribution rate is getting higher. So it shows that people only drive when there is a cause. So let me show you the framework, how it works. So we do have bonds of problems. We have social problems, technological problems, environmental problems, and economical problems. But how are we going to coordinate with all those things? So these are the cause, and for example, if that our people means these are the people we have to reach out and we have to sensitize for us to bring in our network and see the different dimension. So some of them will be motivated, of course, and some will not. So the unmotivated people can be reached either by different sort of motivation. For example, you have to maybe incentivize them or you have to inspire them or you have to play other tricks. 
So you get the committed number of people, and that committed number of people will also run the advocacy um, uh, uh, things, and also do the research, evidence-based research, and also we have to build their capacity so that they will be in the ground prepared. And by doing all those things, we'll get the open data, and also we'll be able to change the policies if needed, and also we'll have the strong team. This is about the presentation. Thank you.